Hey everybody, it's Christopher Small, the owner of CMS Law Firm. We do estate planning, we do probate, we do it well. And today, I wanna to talk to you about what goes into a basic or foundational estate plan. Before we get to that though, I wanna remind you, if you have questions about this or anything else related to estate planning or probate, and you wanna talk with us over the phone for free, you can do so by going to cmslawfirm.com. Okay, what is in a foundational estate plan? When I think about foundational, I think about what is something that everyone should have. It may not give you comprehensive coverage, but it's going to give you the basics, the things that you need to protect yourself, the things that you need to protect your family, the things that you need to make sure your assets go where you want them to go. All right, so that's what we're gonna talk about today. And side note, if you have a conversation with me or with anyone on our team about estate planning, <laughs> And, and you uh, want us to help you, you were going to hear basically this exact same discussion there. So if you decide to book a time and talk to us, be ready because you're gonna hear it again, okay? So this is the way I always describe it. So super high level estate planning covers you in two circumstances. Circumstance number one is if you are alive but incapacitated. Think like you're in a car accident and you're in a coma or you are elderly and you have dementia, okay? Things that are going to cover you there are going to be power of attorney. Power of attorney is basically who can step in and manage your day-to-day -day life. Pay the bills, uh, sign things for you. I mean, just do whatever needs to be done for you. Now, they have a fiduciary duty to act in your best interest, and they should be somebody that you trust. Typically, if you are married, it's going to be spouse first, and then you have a backup. If you are not married, it's going to be whoever you want, and potentially a backup in case it's like a partner. Number two is going to be medical power of attorney. This person is responsible for making medical decisions for you if you cannot. All right. Again, that's pretty straightforward. Typically, it's going to be spouse first um, and then a backup. If you don't have a spouse again, just a backup. Okay. Or just a person and a backup. Number three is health care directive, sometimes called a living will. This document has one purpose. Let your, well, it really has two purposes, three purposes. <laughs> Purpose number one, let your medical power of attorney know what you would want to do if you were in a vegetative state. Do you want to pull the plug or not? Okay, that's that's what this document does. This is the weirdest document for everyone to, to complete, by the way. Just puts you in a weird frame of mind for some reason. Okay, that's purpose number one. Purpose number two is to let the world know what it is that you want to do. Okay, friends, family, anybody that thinks they might have an idea of what you want to do, this clears up any confusion which number three, eliminate conflict amongst family members about what you want to do if you find yourself in the situation. If you recall the Terry Schiavo case from I think it's like the early 90s or maybe the mid 90s, that's kind of where this came from. Um, she was brain dead. Husband said she wanted to pull the plug. Parents said she did not. Nobody knew for sure. It went to court. It was a mess. And now we have the health care directive. All right, um, that is, okay, so if you are, if you have children that are under 18, so if you have minor children, you'll have a couple of additional documents. Number one is going to be minor power of attorney. This is basically, it's minor power of attorney and minor medical power of attorney. Together, these are both sort of like temporary guardianship designations. If you and your spouse or you and the other parent are injured or unavailable, who can step in and sort of uh, fulfill those parental duties until a parent can step in and take them back over. Sign a field trip slip. Take a kid to a dentist, okay? Normal parent things that you do that you need to have authority for, but not everybody up the street can just walk in and do those things, okay? Minor power of attorney, minor medical power of attorney. That's the alive side. The other side of estate planning is what most people think about when they think of estate planning, that's when you die. And I, and Unfortunately, we're all gonna die, okay? So, hate to break it to you. Hopefully this isn't a total downer for you, but it's gonna happen. The things that are covered on that side are going to be disposition instructions, which are like burial instructions, and then we're gonna have the will. Will does a couple different things. First, will is going to name your executor, also called personal representative. This person is in charge essentially of gathering your assets, determining your debts, paying your debts, 
distributing your assets, okay? Will is also going to name long-term guardians. If you are gone and you have minor children, who is going to step into that parental role and take care of them, okay? If you don't name someone in your will, a court is going to choose uh, amongst the people that raise their hand and say they're interested. What I always say at this point is, look, in almost every family, there is a person or a group of people that look really good on paper, but that you would never want to raise your kids, okay? So you either have money uh, d disagreements, education disagreements, political views are different, philosophically you're just different, right? So with a will, you get to pick who that person is. Whoever is named in the will is going to be the person as long as they agree, right? Third and final thing a will does is distributions. Who gets what? If you don't have a will, then the, the state's laws will control who gets what. It doesn't go to the state necessarily, that's a different video, but it, it may go to someone that you don't want it to go to, okay? The typical um, way it goes is spouse, kids, parents, siblings, nieces, and nephews, okay? If you reach a level, that level gets everything. So if you're not if you're not sure about that, if you want to give to charity, if you want to give to friends, if you want to give to specific family members, then you're going to want to have a will, all right? That's it. All of those things together, I would consider it to be a, foundation, a foundational estate plan. And everybody should have one of these, okay? I have one, and it's magical. Uh, it really does protect you, though. It gives you everything that you need to protect yourself personally to make sure your family is taken care of and to make sure everything goes where you want it to go, okay? Super important. And that's it. All right, so hopefully this made sense. If you have questions about this, leave me a comment below. I will answer it. If you liked it and you want some more information, you can hit the like button or you can follow. Um, I have videos everywhere, so check those out. And if you have specific questions about estate planning or probate and you want to talk with us over the phone, you can do so by going to cmslawfirm.com. All right, that is it. As always, I am Christopher Small. I am the owner of CMS Law Firm. We do estate planning. We do probate. We do it well. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. I appreciate you, and I'll talk to you again soon. See ya.